My M2 Pro MacBook Pro after one year has only 93% battery health. It lost 7% in just 50 cycles. So this raises a logical question. How can I keep the battery health of my MacBook 100% and whether it is technically possible? The internet is full of conflicting information. So let's untangle this mess together. First, what is this battery health and how are these cycles calculated? One charge cycle is one full recharge of the battery's full capacity. Let's say your Mac's battery is at 100%, use it till it drops to 50 percent then you charge it back to 100 percent that's not a full charge cycle yet if you use it again down to 50 percent and recharge it these two halves add up to one full charge cycle so it's not about how many times you plug in your charger but how much of the battery's capacity you use. The battery health is a bit trickier since it's not easily measurable. Your MacBook calculates its battery health by keeping track of two main things, the battery's capacity to hold the charge over time and the number of charge cycles it's gone through. The Mac measures the current maximum battery capacity based on the output current and compares it to the original currents when it was new. Over time, a bunch of such measurements get added up and based on that, the computer can guess an approximate capacity. This capacity and the number of cycles can get analyzed and based on their correlation the Mac decides the battery health. So when the Mac says that it has only 93%, it doesn't necessarily mean that the battery has retained 93% of its total capacity. You can check the true capacity of the battery with third-party apps like Coconut Battery, which in my case states that the real capacity right now is 89%. So what should you do? First, don't panic. It is fairly common for batteries to not have the design capacity from the factory. Sometimes the battery can hold more energy and sometimes less. Also, this lowered capacity on the Mac doesn't mean the same as it does on your iPhone. MacBook batteries hold much more power by design, even though they might have similar capacity to the flagship iPhones. And that's exactly why 90% of the MacBook is roughly equivalent to 95% on an iPhone. With that settled, I wanna show you something cool. This is a transparent power bank Charge Shargeek 170. It has this cool triangular transparent design. Charge says the Shargeek 170 is based on the prism in Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon cover. And I absolutely love that. It has two USB-C and one USB-A port and can charge three devices at once. I can charge my laptop, my phone, AirPods, all at the same time. And the speed of said charging is also admirable. It can give up to 140 watts of charge through a single Type-C port, making it ideal for charging my Mac on the go. Total power output is 170 watts, so yeah, it's enough for everything. It also has super fast charging support with a power delivery 3.1 standard, and its capacity is just massive, especially given its size, 24 thousand million powers. It's basically a power station that fits in your pocket. Great for trips or just everyday use. Sorry, but I just can't go over this design. This is my first transparent power bank and I'm pretty stoked. Anyway, there's a smart display that shows various charge parameters and metrics in case you're interested in that. But the good stuff is still not over because it is fully airline safe and can be safely brought to your flights and the carry-on bags. Oh, and it's IP66 water resistant. Not a big deal. Come on, how often do you see water resistant power banks? And last but not least, it has a special low current mode specifically for charging small devices like AirPods, Apple Watch, and so on. Thank you, Charge, for sponsoring this video, and I will leave a link in the description, so be sure to check it out. Some practical instructions on taking care of your Mac's battery can be found on Apple's website. The first thing Apple recommends is updating to the latest software, and I have some conflicting thoughts about that. On the one hand, new macOS versions often bring additional optimizations and performance improvements, but at the same time, as the OS becomes more and more advanced, pushes the MacBook a bit harder, thus consuming more energy. So this is basically a double-edged sword. If your MacBook is already old and the battery life isn't great, it may not make sense to install any updates since they can make the battery life worse. Usually when it comes to MacBooks or iPhones, I give the same advice to everyone who asks. After your iPhone or MacBook celebrates its third birthday, you should not install major updates unless they're absolutely needed. An even better advice would be to buy a new iPhone or new MacBook after that three-year period, but not everyone can do that. Apple also recommends optimizing the battery settings, such as turning on the low power mode, just in the brightness, turning off Wi-Fi and so on. This might sound smart, but if we simplify this advice to the bare minimum, it will sound something like, if you don't want the battery on your MacBook to degrade, don't use it. The third advice, however, is much more useful. Apple says that if we're charging other devices from our MacBook, we should keep the Mac connected to the power adapter. While connected to the outlet, your MacBook will not use its battery to charge, for example, your iPhone. It will work as a hub, simply passing through the energy from the outlet 
to your iPhone without putting a strain on the battery. And I feel like this is the perfect time to answer a lifelong question. Can you keep your MacBook plugged in all the time? Short answer is yes, you can do it without damaging the battery, but this rabbit hole goes a bit deeper than that. As deep as our love to you, so if you love what we do, hit the like button and sub to the channel. Now, there is a thing called micro cycles. When your MacBook's battery is fully charged and still plugged in, it goes through small charge and discharge cycles to maintain its charge without overcharging. In the long run, micro cycles can contribute to the overall wear of the battery, but their impact is relatively minor compared to full charge and discharge cycles. Now, I want you to look at the battery icon on your Mac's menu bar. Typically, when your Mac is fully charged and is connected to the outlet, it looks like this and says that the power source is the power adapter, not the battery, and that is fully charged. But sometimes, it can also say something like this. Charging on hold, rarely used on battery. If you get this message, it's okay. This is Apple's optimized battery charging working. When you see such a message, let the Mac do its thing. Don't press on charge to full now. Trust me, your Mac knows best how to charge his battery. But even so, there are a few things you could do. First, don't forget to fully discharge and recharge your Mac. And no, this is not a part of that old myth about the battery's memory. It's much simpler than that. Fully discharging and then recharging your MacBook's battery can help recalibrate the battery's internal management system so it more accurately reflects the actual charge and health of the battery. If you never let the battery fully discharge, the system's estimate of the remaining battery life might become less accurate over time. However, it's not something you need to do often. Doing this process once every few months is usually enough. Another thing is to use apps like Al Dente, which fix what Apple has overlooked, battery charge limit. The general idea is that limiting the battery charge to 80% can help prolong its lifespan because it reduces stress on the battery. However, modern MacBooks come with built-in battery management features that help optimize battery health over time. These features automatically manage charging and discharging. And if you're using the macOS Catalina or newer, it already includes a battery health management feature that adjusts the maximum charge level to improve battery lifespan. So limiting the battery manually might not give that huge of a boost to health as you would expect. Now let's address a couple more common questions like MagSafe or Type-C. People who are just switching to MacBooks may not know that they can indeed charge their computers through the USB-C port. And when they do find this out, they start wondering which option is the best. And the answer here is simple, pretty simple. It doesn't matter. It's purely question of convenience. MagSafe magnetically attaches to your Mac and will just snap off if you accidentally trip over it. USB-C, however, can handle a viable option for people working from the office, since in most offices, there are docking stations or hubs that come with the monitors, or if you're someone who plans on using the studio display, then USB-C is an even better option for you because with just one port, you will not only send the video feed to the monitor, but also charge your Mac. These two charging methods are completely interchangeable so charge however you like, it won't affect the battery. And people are often wondering about power adapters, which one to use. MacBooks still come with a power adapter included, unlike iPhones. And I'd say that the best adapter you can choose for your MacBook is the original one, because Apple precisely knows how much power your MacBook requires, so the power adapter that comes with your laptop is perfectly suited for that particular laptop. However, if you're using the Mac with Apple Silicon, you will be happy to know that slowly charging your MacBook works just as good as it does on the iPhone. I often recommend charging your iPhone with the least powerful adapter you can find, like that 5 watt adapter that came with old iPhones. You can use the 10 watt adapter from your old iPad or even a 20 watt adapter from your new iPad. It doesn't really matter. And if you want to slowly charge your MacBook, it's better to charge it at night when you're not using it. If you plug your Mac into the slow power adapter and then do something intensive, the MacBook will have no choice but to use the battery power while charging it. In this case, you will be damaging both the battery and the power adapter. They will get hot and you never want that to happen. The same goes for charging your MacBook from a power bank. Those things don't give out enough power to allow the MacBook to spread its wings, and you definitely don't want to overheat the power bank. So again, if you're gonna attempt slow charging or charge your Mac from a power bank, do it at night. When you're not using the computer, this way it will charge slowly without overheating. What I like about MacBooks is that all iPhone tricks work on them too. But due to the size of the batteries and the power they store, which is, by the way, much greater than the one in your typical iPhone, the things that are secondary in iPhones become more important here. For example, you should avoid extreme temperatures and try to keep your MacBook relatively cool. The comfort zone for MacBook temperatures is between 62 
and 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 16 to 22 Celsius. Even storing the Mac in hot environments can damage the battery. It's better to keep your Mac cold rather than hot. And a few more words about storing your Mac long term. For long term storage, keep your Mac half charged, around 50%. Don't store it fully charged or fully drained to avoid damage. Turn off to save battery and store in a cool, dry place with a temperature of around 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 Celsius. If you plan on storing the Mac for over six months, make sure to recharge it to 50% every six months. The underlying idea behind all this is that you can't babysit your Mac and have 100% battery health perpetually. Even if the system says that it does, in reality, it doesn't. With no amount of tricks can you change the chemistry and physics. So just use your MacBook normally, don't push the battery too hard, don't edit videos in the middle of the desert or do other crazy things. If you keep it plugged, recharge it from time to time. If you use it on battery, charge it with the original power brick or with a trusted brick. That's basically it. And if you plan on buying a new MacBook, we recently made a great overview of all MCU's chips, explaining who should buy which chip and why. Thanks for watching and See you there.